Welcome back to CBS Morning. Some unlikely voices are highlighting what they say is a big danger to our forest and our planet from items that we use every single day. Now, Procter & Gamble makes some of the most popular paper products you see in America. Now, two descendants of the company's founders are pushing to change how those products are made. Anna Warner is here with an interview that you'll see only on CBS Mornings. I'm looking forward to this because we do use this stuff every single day. Good to see you, <laughs> That's Anna. That's right, Gail. Good to see you, too. You know, these descendants, they have no ownership in the company, but they feel a personal obligation to go public about this. They're relatives of the founder, a brother and sister, speaking out for the first time to say in this time of climate change, they believe the company founded by their ancestor is putting profits over the planet. Procter & Gamble has a long history in America. You, yes, you, will love gentle ivory soap. And it's 29-year-old Justine Epstein and her 26-year-old brother Jules Feeney's history, too. They're proud sixth-generation descendants of James Gamble, who began the company with William Procter. We grew up always knowing, as far back as I can remember, that we were related to the founders of Procter & Gamble. Today, P&G is a roughly $350 billion corporation with household brands including Febreze, Gillette, Crest, and Charmin. It's still really a shock in some ways to realize just how far-reaching their products really are. That growth has benefited them, but more recently brought concerns about their family's legacy. I started to see Procter & Gamble products on boycott lists um, last summer, and I wanted to know more. For example, the NRDC, an environmental group, gave P&G's popular Charmin an F for sustainability. Sweet pillars of softness. This is soft. Oh. Soft, yes, but some of the wood pulp used to make it comes from Canada's boreal forest, one of the world's remaining intact forests, considered key in the fight against climate change. The absurdity of cutting down such an essential ecosystem for a product that we will use one time and it will go into our septic systems or into the sewage, to me, is really just absurd. That's one reason they say they decided to speak out for the very first time. I understand the way that corporations <laughs> behave. I, I know that their bottom line is profit. But in this case, it's personal. Yeah. It's easy to eye roll at a big corporation and say we can't do anything about it. In our case, we looked at each other and we're like, we can. So last October, they sent this letter, shown publicly here for the first time and shared exclusively with CBS News, to P&G's chief executive officer, David Taylor, saying while they take pride in the company's innovations, they are deeply concerned to learn that their production is coming at a terrible price to the planet and its inhabitants. 88 descendants from both the Procter & Gamble families signed it, asking P&G to take full responsibility to address its impacts on forests, communities, and the climate crisis. So you wrote this letter. Mm -hmm. We actually requested in that letter to meet with the CEO. But instead of a meeting with Taylor, they say, P&G offered a presentation. Is that what you wanted? No. To me, it felt a little bit like a PR solution, basically, to say, we're going to tell you what we're already doing because we think it's enough. P&G officials confirmed no meeting with Taylor was offered, but said they've met with descendants on a range of important topics, including responsible sourcing. In regard to toilet paper, P&G says its wood pulp sourcing absolutely prohibits deforestation and estimates less than 1% of its global wood pulp sourcing includes intact forest. But it's not just the descendants urging P&G to do better. While Procter & Gamble has made some changes to its forest policies, it has not addressed the fundamental issue. Thomas Peterson is with Green Century Equity Fund, an investment firm that last year put a resolution in front of P&G's shareholders, asking the company to increase its efforts to eliminate deforestation, for example, by using more recycled materials. They are not changing their plan to continue sourcing 100% virgin fiber for their tissue products. And that's a major source of concern for us that they haven't changed there. The resolution passed with 67% of shareholders approving it. That's unprecedented. That's a shareholder rebellion. P&G says it's focused on developing innovations, but needs to keep using virgin forest fiber for its toilet paper, that not doing so would hinder its ability to make paper products, significantly impacting its business. But these siblings say they'll keep pushing 
for the family business to change. We want to be able to say, hey, this is a company that we can be proud of being descended from. What do you think James Gamble would think? I would like to think that he'd be proud of us. I certainly hope that six generations from now that our descendants are proud of us. P&G says it is committed to a public investment of $20 million over five years of innovation in non-wood fibers, but these descendants say with the pace of climate change, that's not enough and it's not happening fast enough. So uh, environmentalists say making toilet paper out of trees is just an environmental catastrophe. Uh, but Procter & Gamble says they're committed to responsible sourcing. Right. What are they doing in that right. area? So P&G will tell you that they source from responsibly managed forest areas. But what these descendants are saying is, look, taking any trees out of these intact forests, these are the forests that remain on Earth to help keep carbon in, protect against climate change. And they're saying, look, the climate emergency is here. You know, you can't just say, well, we're researching, we're doing this, yeah. you know, we're doing the best we can, we're, we're working on it. They're like, working on it's not enough. Time guys. is literally running out. Time's running out. Time is running out. Gotta get on it. I was relieved during your piece. I checked uh, the toilet paper that I use at home. It's called plant paper. It uses bamboo. That's a new thing, bamboo, right. An innovation. Tony, now, you're doing your part. Want to go around the table and endorse our various <laughs> paper products? I love that they're speaking up, though, Anna. What are other family members saying? I was wondering what parents You know, they had were. they had these descendants sign on, as you saw, like some 90, it's actually 96 descendants who signed on, everybody from grandfathers all the way down. And there's actually a tradition. Their dad spoke up about some P&G practices, I think it was back in the 70s. Wow. Oh, so, okay. you, know, there's, you know, they're not all going public, but these two decided to yeah. take this step, which is a big step. I commend them for that. Yeah. Anna, thank you very much.